So you heard those words today from St. Paul, live for the Lord. Whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. Live for the Lord. Now, we've been kind of developing this for a couple of weeks now, and I think it's important that each and every one of us who are in this church right now ask ourselves that very question. Do I truly live for the Lord? Now, what that would, of course, mean, if I answer it honestly, is that my whole life is surrendered to him. My whole existence, my whole being is surrendered to him. And a key to all of this, if we're going to understand it truly, is that we are in that continual process of becoming more like the Lord. And so we have to examine the last couple of weeks, especially, who's been one of the key figures that we keep seeing, who keeps turning up, other than St. Peter? St. Peter, who was the one that professes Jesus as Lord, St. Peter, who, who gets chewed out the next week. This is the same St. Peter that today comes up and like, Lord, like, you know, let me, do, let me have just this little tidbit, Lord, because, you know, there's those people in my life that no matter how hard I, I've tried to forgive them, they, they don't want to be forgiven. And so I just want to have this ability to write them off. That sound like a lot of us? <laughs> I know I can be like that at times. You know how it is, like, you know, they, there are people that, let's face it, you know, they're, they're obstinate, they're stubborn. And St. Peter is just trying to find a way to get rid of these obstinate, stubborn people from his life. This is the same St. Peter, mind you, that Jesus is forming and molding and preparing and getting ready, and yet he still doesn't get it. Now, we're in Matthew's Gospel, so this, this Gospel doesn't just fall out of the sky. This isn't just St. Peter not getting it. It's clear he's not getting it because we good Catholics, like we remember everything we've heard from St. Matthew's Gospel this entire year. You know, back like maybe when we heard the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, that's kind of how the liturgical year started back in the winter. Now we're getting ready for fall. Don't forget, what are some of the things that Jesus said even then? And he continues to say over and over again. Like when he gave them the Our Father, forgive us as we forgive our trespassers. We're going to say that in a few minutes. Do we really mean it? The same Jesus that said, when your enemy strikes you, turn the other cheek. Part of the Sermon on the Mount. It's a matter of a stance of forgiveness. I don't want to be pushing back. And forgiveness requires effort. And that effort really takes a lot into account. And there's so many other examples of how Jesus demonstrates that he's here to reconcile the human race to God. He's here to make forgiveness possible. And yet, how often do we as people kind of close ourselves off to that possibility of being forgiven? There's two different dynamics that are going on. If we live for the Lord, then we have to recognize it. Not only does God want to forgive, I have to want to be forgiven. And how many of us carry our sins, carry our hurts, carry our pains, carry our wounds, pushing back against the Lord who's just trying to heal us, trying to heal us through forgiveness? The forgiveness is there. It's offered to you. God sent his son to the cross. That's what St. Paul is trying to tell us. Whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. If we are the Lord's, we're forgiven. I am forgiven. And yet I don't always accept that forgiveness. I have that obstinacy that St. Peter ran into, and that's why Jesus makes it clear to, to St. Peter, no, you don't quit. You don't give up. I've seen too many families broken apart. I've seen too many relations destroyed because of obstinacy to forgiveness, to that obstinacy to accepting another into my life. I'd rather cling to my anger or cling to my hurt than to let this person back into my life because you know what? That'll make me vulnerable. It'll make me vulnerable to being hurt again. And St. Peter is trying to dance around that and Jesus is saying, no, Peter, it doesn't work that way. You've been forgiven. Now you have to go out and forgive others. And so my dear brothers and sisters, here's the challenge. If we truly want to live for the Lord, if we truly want to say that we belong to the Lord, 
then this is one of those gauges that we have to look at very carefully. What is God, one, one of his primary attributes is mercy. God's primary attribute is mercy. And do we accept that mercy? I mean, one of the, one of the greatest revelations that happened in the 20th century, of course, was St. Faustina with God's divine mercy. If you haven't looked at her diary, you got to read that diary. It, it's such a profound expression of God's mercy. And when I ask somebody to read it, it's not a novel. It's not meant to be read like a page turner that you read a couple of pages or a couple of paragraphs at a time and ponder what you're reading, how God's love for us, God wants forgiveness. God offers forgiveness. It's there. He's not saying anything other than to accept it, to embrace it, to, to let that mercy envelop us. Father Joe Roche has actually done the, the, the diary in a year on a podcast, so if you're not good at your reading, he's done it for you. In the course of a year, you can hear the whole diary. But again, what's the dynamic going on here? God wants to reconcile with us, and he's offering us that forgiveness, and it's up to us to accept it. But here's the part that I think sometimes we don't like too much. If I am to accept God's forgiveness, then I have to change. If God forgives me and I keep doing the same thing, that's what St. Peter was getting frustrated about. Well, God will get frustrated by it too. What's the whole point of the gospel? Convert, change, improve, get better. Stop making the same mistakes. How often we just, uh, and I've said this before, how, many, how often someone will come into the sacrament of reconciliation looking to reconcile and start out by saying, and it's the same things, Father, that I always confess. And it is. A lot of times it's the same sins. And the reason that I say to someone, well, the reason that it's the same sins is because you really haven't yet experienced the grace that God's giving us through his divine mercy. And they'll look at me like really shocked. You mean I wasn't forgiven? No, you were forgiven. If I pray those words of absolution over you, you're forgiven. Your culpability for those sins is remitted, but you still cling to your sin. And so you really haven't lived for the Lord. You've lived for yourself. And so here's the question that I often ask. If you commit the same sin and you keep committing the same sin, what plan have you put in place to change. Do you have a plan? You look, a lot of times, you know, I get angry. I get angry. Well, what are you doing to change that? What is your plan to change that? Try catching yourself when you first feel it and say, instead of getting angry in this moment, I'm just going to listen to this person. I'm going to try to hear this person. I'm going to let this person who's seeking my forgiveness be forgiven. That, that servant today didn't even hear what the person was saying. The exact same words he had just said. Never even heard the words that it were his own words. Just give me a little time and I'll do it. So what's the plan? Let's start with forgiving and being forgiven. And so look into your own life a little bit more closely. Look around you a little bit more closely. You know as well as I do that there are people that you just can't forgive. And yet you've been forgiven. Now, mind you, they have to want to be forgiven. There has to be a change on their part as much as there's a change on my part. But we can't give up. That's the key thing. It may take years and years and years for reconciliation to be finally achieved but we have to keep pursuing, we have to keep trying. Because what's at the heart of the gospel? Mercy. What's at the heart of the gospel? Love. And what's the point of the gospel? Salvation. And no one of us doesn't want to go to heaven. We all want one day to be in heaven. And that means we've been converting on the entire journey until we get to that moment when we have to face our Lord and Savior. And that's when he's going to look at us and say, one of two things. I don't know you, which we're going to hear in a little while in Matthew's gospel. 
or he's going to say, good and faithful servant, come to the table prepared for you. Now, if I truly love you and I truly want to be forgiven by you or to forgive you, well, that's a big part of the process. That's how we're going to get to that moment where Jesus is going to say, come, my servant, I forgave you, you forgave others. I loved you, you loved others. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, make a plan today to change your heart, to change your life, to change your ways, and to work truly on forgiving, being forgiven and forgiving. So maybe a good part of the plan is, if you haven't been to the Sacrament of Reconciliation in a while, consider going. Simple little thing, right? Consider going. If it's been a little while, if it's been a long while, absolutely then consider going. But for the most part, don't avoid the sacrament that God gave us for his mercy, because that's where the challenge will come. That's where the grace will come, and the change can begin by our repenting of our sins, of changing ourselves so that we can forgive others, so that we can be prepared in whatever way we can. Now, mind you, of course, forgiveness requires effort. It requires effort on my part to prepare my heart to allow you back in. And that's where the struggle, I think, often comes. But I want you to be part of my life. I want you to be part of who I am. I want to be able to love you, and that will require that we work together. And so today, Jesus is asking us, live for the Lord. If we truly live for the Lord, we will live like the Lord. And the Lord was loving, he was caring, he was compassionate, he was full filled with um, forgiveness for the people around him. He called sinners to repentance, and they converted. He called the righteous to humility, and sometimes they didn't convert, but some of them did. So instead of our being so stubborn and obstinate sometimes in our relationships, let's try to be a little bit more open and forgiving. So today, I ask you, begin to live for the Lord even more than you have. Live for him, as St. Paul says. We belong to him. Let, uh, let him possess us. Let him control us. Let him be the one to guide us and to push us forward. Because we cannot live in this life and expect to be with him in the next if we have not lived with him in this life, lived for him in this life. And so may God continue to bless you with his grace. May God continue to give you his peace. May God's reconciliation and mercy be yours all the days of your life. And when you live for the Lord, may his forgiveness that he has offered to you be offered by you to others. God bless you.